Hey everybody, it's Jim here, and today I'm in for a little bit of a treat. On one of the first episodes of Would I Rebuy This Guitar, I went over a Fender Made in Japan Troublemaker Telecaster in the black, and I said the only way I would rebuy it is if it was under 8 pounds and in the Arctic White. And here we are, almost a year later. In case you're not familiar, it looks very similar to a guitar that the American factory made of the parallel universe. Differences being, this does not have block inlays. These are dot inlays on it. And I believe that the white version of this guitar has chrome appointments to it. This one is straight up nickel with the nice black locking tuners on it. Now before I start talking about the tones and that kind of side of things, I think it would be best if I played a little bit of a demo with this guitar, give you an idea of what you can expect if you happen to find one of these used and decide to pick one up. So without further ado, let's hear what it sounds like.
As far as the sounds of this instrument go, this guy is really its own thing. You factor in, like, it's kind of a parts bin of so many ideas of classic guitar designs. It's got the Telecaster Fender scale length, 25 and a half, but it's got a mahogany neck and a mahogany body. This is a kind of heavy Telecaster, 7 pounds, 14 ounces, but it just rocks, and it doesn't rock in the same way as a Gibson, though. It just doesn't have that same kind of feel to it. The strings feel a little bit more tension in them than a typical Gibson, and again, I think that's down to the scale length. It's one of those things, but it feels like when I'm playing this guitar, having been playing my Les Paul Standard for quite a bit since I've gotten it, this feels more like a little bit of a precision kind of instrument thing. I have to really dial in exactly what I'm doing, make sure I'm pushing as hard as I can to kind of get things to the clarity levels that I want them to as far as the notes ringing true. But when it comes off, it is absolutely beautiful. In the middle position, it does a very good job with the stock electronics of hitting a really classic Telecaster sound. I really enjoyed that. For the cleans overall, it, it's very, very usable. It's not one of those things where a lot of humbucker guitars, you'll kind of write them off, especially something like this that looks kind of more aggressive, so to speak. You might think cleans are not going to be what this guitar is used for. However, in my experience with both the black one and now this one, I think it does a darn good job at both. Gain, self-explanatory. This guy just absolutely smokes. Throw a little bit more onto it. I didn't even realize I was on the vintage side. I thought I was on the modern side at one point because of how much gain this guy was putting out. It's just combination of the woods, the pickups, and the amp just led to a very, very, very raw and dirty experience, and I loved every second of it. And at a time where it seems like roasted maple is all the rage, when you see the grain of this African mahogany, even on the headstock, man, it is absolutely stunning. It catches your eyes straight away. Same thing on the back of the neck. It's a beautiful satinish finish. It is just effortless to play. It's a nice C neck. It's a compromise between a thick neck and a thin neck. It just feels absolutely its own thing. And when you just sit back and you look at the guitar, it has this timeless yet modern look to it. It's just so aesthetically pleasing. It's really unfortunate in my opinion that this is not a model that's regularly produced by Fender, by either the American factory or the Japanese factory or even the Mexican factory. I think it would be a great addition and really if they're already going to be making HH Telecasters, why not just go all the way with it and make something like this at a lower price point? It has its own appeal to it and it really kind of differentiates itself a little bit more than a traditional HH Telecaster or like a Telecaster Deluxe that come with the different kind of wide range pickups as opposed to traditional humbuckers. But to wrap this video up real quick, guitars like this are why I love and I trust Fender Japan more so than any of the other factories bar for the custom shop. I know exactly what I'm getting. I never have any issues. The only thing that unfortunately happened with this guy, got a little bit of a chip on the bottom of it. And I mean, these things happen, but when you have a poly finish, eh, it is what it is. It's not going to be an easy fix. However, yeah, that's life. Sometimes these things do happen. Plays great, stays in tune great, sounds great, awesome look, rare guitar in the United States. What's not to love? If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please leave a like. If you can subscribe, it would mean the world to me. I know that it's like 90% of the people that watch all these videos are not subscribed. So an extra thank you to both my Patreons and also my loyal subscribers. You guys are the best leaving comments, interacting on the streams, interacting on the Discord server. It's really, really been a fun experience growing with all you guys, but I got to run because I want to play this guitar. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for another guitar related video. Take it easy, everybody.